Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to go over an interesting piece of news that many of you have been emailing me, which is that New York police are saying that shoppers should take off face masks before entering stores. Now there are multiple layers to this story, so you're probably going to want to listen to the entire thing before you come up with your thought on it. It says that masks, once an essential COVID protection measure, are now being worn by criminals to conceal their identities, according to New York police who are urging businesses to unmask customers before letting them enter stores. And the case that they're talking about here is after a masked criminal entered a Queens jewelry store and made off with about $1.1 million in property after beating a 79-year-old woman who was watching the store. Since the pandemic, this is a way of life for us, when people wear masks regularly. But we're seeing this used too much as a ruse to enter businesses and to victimize our businesses, Madry said. He added that businesses can permit customers to don their masks after they have identified themselves. It can be a condition of entry that a mask is removed, and once the person is identified, they can put their mask back on for safety. And one of the things that I've pointed out in several videos I've done on this channel is that wearing a mask is not always exactly done to protect those around you. Uh, this is a video that I did two years ago. This is actually a few blocks away from my old store in New York City. It looks like this is right around Supreme Pizzeria, which is across the street from Amadeus. And you have two people here that are engaging in a knife fight where one person got cut really, really, really bad. And as you can see, when they're out of the store, they're both wearing masks because they want to make sure that the people around them don't get COVID. I guess at least he's wearing the mask. The other person, I think is, his mask may have come off in the altercation. You have this interesting thing, which is actually three blocks away from my old apartment, and you have people that are shooting at each other. But again, to ensure that nobody gets COVID, they are wearing a mask. So you can see that one runs after the other, and that he's doing the whole shooting like this thing, which by the way, is really bad for accuracy, I hear from my uh, neighbors in Texas. But you could see that they are all wearing masks to ensure that nobody around them gets COVID. So there are many reasons that people wear masks and they are not always exactly to protect others. And this does seem like something that makes sense to propose after you notice this weird pattern that several years after vaccines are available and many people have gotten COVID and gotten over it, the people that tend to be the ones doing the robberies tend to be the ones that are wearing a mask and exploiting the fact that COVID normalized wearing a mask. However, this is something that really does require another level to the conversation. Is this actually about preventing crime or is it about allowing the NYPD and private businesses to make use of facial recognition cameras and software, which have been being, in my opinion, severely abused by several businesses? Over here it says NYPD can use more than 15,000 cameras to track people using facial recognition in Manhattan, the Bronx, and Brooklyn. And while I don't particularly wear a mask anymore, again, I wore a mask back in, I believe, early March of 2020, all the way up until summer of 2021 after I had already gotten COVID once and gotten vaccinated, I had no problem wearing a mask. The, the issue here is the facial recognition. I, I don't think this is necessarily about crime all the way so much as it is about private businesses and the city and the state spending insane amounts of money on facial recognition cameras facial recognition software and computers powerful enough to parse through this type of stuff very quickly Oreo, and it being undermined by this 50 cent thing that you put over your face if you wear a set of glasses and you have a face mask on, the facial recognition software will often not work, making it more difficult to track you. Now, you may ask, well, why should I care about facial recognition and tracking? That's ridiculous. This is an article from the New York Times that's also been repeated in NBC several times. MSG Entertainment is owned by a billionaire who seems to have certain grudges, and this is the way that he has chosen to use facial recognition software. And tell me if this doesn't make you want to don a mask, even if you were somebody that has never worn a mask in your life. Kelly Conlon, 44, a personal injury lawyer from Bergen County, New Jersey, was chaperoning her nine-year-old daughter's Girl Scout troop on a trip into Manhattan to see the Christmas Spectacular at Radio City Music Hall. Before she could even glimpse the Rockettes, however, security guards pulled Miss Conlon aside and her New York jaunt and took an Aurelian turn. They told me that they knew I was Kelly Conlon and that I was an attorney, she said this week. They knew the name of my law firm. The guards had identified her using a facial recognition system. They showed her a sheet saying she was on an attorney exclusion list created this year by MSG Entertainment, which is controlled by the Dolan family. The company instituted this ban this summer, not only on lawyers representing people suing it, but on all attorneys at their firms. The company says litigation creates an inherently adversarial environment 
and so it is enforcing the list with the help of computer software that can identify hundreds of lawyers via profile photos on their firm's own websites using an algorithm to instantaneously pour over images and suggest matches. Facial recognition technology is legal in New York today, but lawyers have sued MSG Entertainment saying the exclusion list is forbidden. The use of facial recognition technology to enforce it has raised an outcry not just from people turned away from Knicks games, but from Sybil Liberties at Watchdogs who called it a startling new frontier that demonstrated why the federal government should regulate the technology. It's a dystopian, shocking act of repression, said Sam Davis, a partner at Ms. Conlon's firm, who was turned away from a Rangers game this month at the Garden. So you could not even be an attorney that is working on this case. Simply because you work for a company I dislike, you are now recognized immediately and kicked out of the business. Now, technically, this is a piece of private property. Now, one of the state senators here did manage to get in a good jab at the Dolan family here. They said that this is their private property. They have the right to choose who is allowed and not allowed on the property. If it's your private property, perhaps you should be paying property tax. It is, Holman Siegel said, a state senator that, point taken. But in all seriousness here, technically, it is your private property. But when you are the owner of a business that has a lot of customers, you don't really have the ability to immediately recognize when somebody has walked into your business, know them by name because they are matched from some database, and then immediately kick them out based on facial recognition. Many of the people who were against wearing masks as a backlash to mask mandates because they thought that this violates their civil liberties are likely the same type of people, in my opinion, that are going to go, you know what? I'm going to wear a mask because F your facial recognition system, I will. Uh, you're not going to know who I am when I enter your building if I don't want you to. The idea that you could be banned from seeing a Knicks or a Rangers game because they know that you work at a firm that they don't like based on facial recognition software that algorithmically detects that your face matches a profile picture on the website of the firm that they don't like is in very, very, very dystopian and while technically legal, they can borrow you from entering your property. They can know where you are at any given time. Ew. This is not the first case of this happening. And this will not be the last. This is something that will get worse and worse and worse. And I really do genuinely wonder if people, again, who at the height of the pandemic said, I will never, ever, ever wear a mask, might just kind of go, you know what? Maybe I will because, and your facial recognition software. This is not going to get better anytime soon. This technology is becoming more and more affordable, which means more people will use it. As the next generation becomes more technologically savvy, the technology that is already available and not really being utilized fully, that will most certainly find new dystopian Orwellian ways to be used and abused wherever people go. While I agree that we reached peak meme at some point where, again, you know, Oh, I'm just going to go do a shooting three blocks from Lewis's house. I'm going to wear a mask. Oh, I'm just going to knife somebody to death in the street, but I'm going to wear a mask. I, I get it. It reached peak meme, where years after vaccinations were available and many people had gotten COVID, had it two or three times already, there were still recommendations that everybody wear a mask. You have to understand here that this is not just about stopping crime. While a lot of that was a meme, I hope you guys can see the flip side of this, which is that crime is being used as a boogeyman to get people to comply with use of facial recognition software in a manner that makes it more effective. This stuff costs an insane amount of money to implement all over the city, and it's being defeated with glasses and 50 cents. And while facial recognition software is something that may make it helpful to catch criminals, it's also something that can make it helpful to keep you from taking your nine-year-old to see the Rockettes because you work at an employer that the owner of the stadium doesn't like. This is not going to get any less dystopian anytime soon. And it's really something that deserves a lot more discussion into the incentives behind these recommendations being made before just saying, yeah, LOL, they had people wearing masks too long. I, I see this just as the very, very, very beginning of the curve. I wouldn't be surprised if you see people who are on opposite sides of the political spectrum deciding, you know what, I'm going to wear a mask a little bit more when I go out in public because I don't feel like you tracking me and knowing where I am all the time. Like, is it okay for me to walk into a Sweet Green or a Mazzetto or a Dwayne Reed or a Walmart without you knowing that I went there? Like, I get it. I get it. You could look at credit card records and this, that, or the other. But, like, do you really need to know where I am and log it every second of the effing day? No. I honestly think, if anything, more people are going to be wearing masks into the future. Because this... Ah, oh, it's just weird. Like...
my employer doesn't like you or you don't like my employer, so I, I can't go to see a Knicks game? Like, really? Really? Yeah, it's their private property. It's their private property, but you know 10 years ago this was not the way most of this worked. And it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope we learned something.